Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now on the left of your screen we have the 8 core 16 thread socket AM4 Ryzen 7 5700X 3D running with 32 gigs of 3200 MHz DDR4. On the right we have the 6 core 12 thread socket AM5 Ryzen 5 7500F running with 32 gigs of 5200 MHz DDR5. I started off by comparing these chips with their officially supported RAM speeds according to the AMD website though. I'll also be throwing in some faster DDR5 benchmark results later on. So with Baldur's Gate 3 at the high preset, we have 148 FPS for the 5700X 3D, the 7500F with the official supported uh, 5200 MHz RAM hit 122 frames per second with a 1% low of 79 and a 0.1% low of 45. So very similar in terms of those percentile lows here. For our Black Myth Wukong benchmark run at 1080p high, we saw 127 FPS for the 5700X 3D with a 1% low of 90 and a 0.1% low of 56. I've said this before, but this game seems to be GPU limited even with a 4080 Super in the system. So it doesn't care too much about your CPU within reason, of course, but both of these are enough to provide the card uh, with some serious and well basically full power during uh, during this benchmark run it's not very CPU heavy from what I found at all and that's why the averages are close with the 7500F we saw 1, 2, 3 FPS with a 1% low of 92 and a 0.1% low of 44 a few more dips and drops with the newer AM5 chip here though for Cyberpunk 2077, I went with the Ultra settings. The 5700X 3D hit 179 FPS with a 1% low of 95 and a 0.1% low of 55. It was actually about the same consistency wise with the newer 7500F socket AM5 chip. And in fact, the average was pretty close to 175 here. So just four frames per second less. And if I didn't have the frame rate counter enabled, you wouldn't be able to tell that the differences with the percentile lows were there possibly not even with the average during actual gameplay of course next up we have forza horizon 5 the benchmark run at the ultra settings here the 5700x 3d hit 199 fps with a 1% low of 125 and a 0.1% low of 83 in this one the 7500f actually did better in my opinion although the average was 2 fps lower the 1% figure was 126, so 1 FPS more. This is sort of within margin of error territory, though. Uh, however, that said, the 0.1% low was 101 compared to 83 that we saw before, and it definitely felt a bit more consistent. So I think the 7500F, even with the 5200 MHz officially supported uh, DDR5 speed here, wins in this case. We'll move on to Kingdom Come Deliverance, an older game but one that is pretty CPU intensive here with the very high settings and HD textures enabled. The 5700X 3D 111 frames per second with a 1% low of 57 and a 0.1% low of 28. We saw 94 frames per second with the 7500F and the percentile lows or the 1% did slip a little bit behind the 5700X 3D but that 0.1% number was actually a little higher. So I think it's a little more consistent with the newer chip in this case. In Red Dead Redemption 2, 207 FPS for the 5700X 3D. This really likes the whole 3D part of the processor. A really good score for the benchmark run in Red Dead here. 207 with a 1% low of 124 and a 0.1% low of 99. That said, our average was still 177 with the 7500F. So pretty good, very good in fact. The 1% low was 119, so quite close to the 5700X 3D. And the 0.1% figure was 108 compared to 99 so a little smoother overall this time around before we add some faster memory to the 7500F system to see if we can close the gap a little with the 5700X 3D, we'll finalise on Starfield. 87 FPS for the older AM4 chip here with a 1% low of 42 and a 0.1% low of 13. We saw 79 FPS with the 7500F, a 1% low of 51 and a 0.1% low of 25. So these percentile figures were improved across the board and thus it was a more consistent experience with the newer uh, processor albeit with its lesser core and thread count but let's up the ram speed now uh, before jumping into some cpu intensive benchmarks at the end as well 
So I made this little table here uh, showcasing all of the game results. We have the 5200 MHz DDR5 for the 7500F as we've run through just now, but we also have faster 6400 MHz. Now the 5200 MHz is CL40 and the 6400 MHz is CL32. So quite a bit of difference with latency as well there. Is this enough to close the gap? We'll start with Baldur's Gate 3 again. 148 for the 5700X3D, 122 for the 7500F with 5200 MHz RAM, and 126 with the 6400 MHz RAM. So not quite enough, but there is a slight improvement, not just to the average, but to that 0.1% number as well. For Black Myth Wukong here, 127, as you saw before, for the older AM4 chip, 123 for the 7500F and 5200 MHz memory, and then 124. So not much of a difference with the faster DDR5, but once again, we see an improvement to the percentile lows. Remember that it's not just about the average and the percentile figures are just as important, sometimes more so. For Cyberpunk 2077 then, as you saw before, we saw 179 for the AM4 5700X 3D and 175 for the 7500F. This time, however, with 6400 MHz dual channel memory, we saw 178, so one FPS lower than the 5700X 3D, so close. Then again, the percentile lows were improved with 98 and 61 respectively, which are the two best results out of this comparison. So I think in terms of consistency and performance here, I'm going to have to declare the 7500F with the 6400 MHz RAM the winner in this case. Forza Horizon 5, this one was also improved with the faster 6400 MHz memory. We've gone from 197 to 200 as an average, which therefore means it beats out the 5700X3D, which comes in at 199. You'll also see from the percentile lows of 127 and 106, up from 126 and 101, that we are still beating the 5700X. 3D, this time even more so with those percentile lows. Kingdom Come next, 111 for the 5700X 3D. This was definitely the better performer here. The faster RAM for the 7500F meant a new average of 99, up from 94. The percentile lows were very much similar though, 50 and 38 as opposed to 50 and 34, and 57 and 28 for the older AM4 chip. So a little bit of inconsistency across the board. To finalise, we have Starfield and Red Dead, of course. Starfield saw 87 FPS with the 5700X 3D and 79 with the 7500F. That said, with the faster memory, we did close the gap a little and the average was now 82. The percentile low was 50 and the 0.1% figure was 30. Our final game is Red Dead Redemption 2. 207 FPS was that fantastic score for the 5700X 3D. For the 7500F, we've gone from 177 to 188 for the 7500F, with improved percentile lows as well, up to 131 and 117, which basically means it improves on the 5700X3D in both of those numbers now. Now, we'll finalise with some CPU tests. This is quite interesting. The R23 result actually provided a better score for the 7500F as expected because the 5700X 3D actually falls behind the standard 5700X. We've gone from 1354 and 1375 to 1810 and 14402 and then 1817 and 14446. The faster memory doesn't actually make much of a difference in this test at all. And the same can be said for the DaVinci Resolve 1080p 60fps render where we saw slower times render wise than the 5700X 3D but I'm guessing in this case it's probably the core count that's responsible for that the extra cores and threads probably help the 5700X 3D out uh, when it comes to rendering but there we go both of these chips are fantastic if you've got an older AM4 board then of course go for the 5700X 3D you won't have to upgrade anything else it feels to me like there's also a bit less of a concern with RAM speeds you know you can get some pretty cheap 3200 MHz DDR4 slap it in there and you're going to be outperforming the 7500F out of the box. With the 7500F, you need the newer platform, a bit more expensive and faster memory really to get a little bit closer. But these CPUs were probably never really meant to be compared. They are different price points after all. And uh, I think when you consider that, the 7500F remains very impressive. But I hope this comparison has been helpful and interesting. So thanks as always, leave your comments down below and I'll see you next time.